All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And today we got a really interesting story. The New York Times has covered how Andrew Yang has kind of done a little bit of a rags to riches switch here and put a pretty humorous highlight upon uh, the story of Andrew Yang's candidacy over the past 18 months. He's got all this money. Now what? We've had a lot of call-ins where people are asking what he can do in Iowa to gain a little bit more steam, uh, how he's going to convert from being kind of an internet candidate to a standard mainstream candidate, as the video we did last week suggested him going mainstream. So we've got a really interesting evolution that's being documented now. Cody, why don't you give us more details? Give us the deets, man. Um, yeah, well, I just thought we were actually talking um, a few minutes ago about maybe doing more talk about Iowa. And we were kind of talking about how he's just spent a million dollars to put all these ads in Iowa. We're kind of in the middle of the Iowa play. So with this New York Times article, I thought it'd be fun to kind of take a look back and see how Andrew Yang got to where he is now from where he started. Remember, a lot of people think he announced his candidacy maybe in the last nine months or so. He announced it early 2018. So he's been a candidate yeah. president for a long time. So without further ado, here's, here's like the article from New York Times. Like there was life before the Joe Rogan podcast. Well, but there was a <laughs> campaign too, and I want yeah. to highlight what the campaign was. It's really interesting and fascinating. I mean, we've talked a lot about how he recently hired Bernie Sanders' old uh, ad firm, and they did a lot of messaging. And I think they mentioned in the article, he's hired people that are in the know political DC types. So DC types are warming up to him because he's hiring their friends. And yeah. But where was the campaign before? A couple of funny anecdotes. So we'll go through this article and we'll go through this. Andrew Yang's campaign has a lot of money. Now what? The entrepreneur is shifting his message, hiring more experienced political hands, and spending big as he tries to expand his support in early states. And yes, he expected to make it this far. So that's what he says. Ooh. Anyway, uh, Andrew Yang arrived for the first New Hampshire event of his presidential campaign in a Subaru with a dented fender. It was the spring of 2018, and he and three staff members had taken his car to Concord, where they were hoping a few dozen voters would be waiting for them at a coffee shop. Inside, they found one, and she listened <laughs> politely. While Mr. Yang explained universal basic income, though she was mostly focused on her Sandwich. This was again spring of eighteen. Now, a lot of you guys. The reason why I want to highlight this again too, you'll notice this was in New Hampshire in spring of two thousand eighteen. Uh, I want to show you guys something that also happened in New Hampshire with Andrew Yang just yesterday, I believe. Okay. Andrew Yang actually officially signed on uh, the the primary in the state of New Hampshire. Yeah. And I want to show you guys the reception. Remember. At a campaign event, he was able to get one person to half listen to him eating a sandwich, according to the New York Who Times. Who was probably getting extra credit at the local yeah. community college. And just look, this is, this is what happened last time he was in New Hampshire, just the other day. Wow. Hey, shout out to my man right here in the bottom right. I think he has the uh, the early donor math hat with the gold math and the, and the uh, thing on the embroidery in the back. All it actually right. has a golden yang claw hand embroidered on the back of it. Very close. Shout out to him. <laughs> But again, you can you can see the math signs going all the way to the end of this hallway. So state he couldn't even get one person to come out and see him, and when he announced his campaign, so that was one funny anecdote. We'll go through and talk more about this though, because there's some really great stories in here. A couple more, if anybody, I'll mention if anybody has more info, please send it to me. But anyway, without further ado, I want to go through this. So yeah, they mentioned how um, nowadays when he goes to New Hampshire, they mentioned what I just told you guys. He was going through, and a lot of people go. Uh, he has a you know a uh, what are they what's their the, an advanced team that shows up and hands out stuff now I mean it's yeah. a real campaign where it wasn't really then uh, and they, at least his advanced team lets you keep the things they hand out not yeah, like Elizabeth oh Warren's God. advanced team which takes back the thunder sticks by the way that's at the, the end thing, of the yeah, meeting here's the thing it's <laughs> it's always cheaper to not have people rag on you forever for doing that than it is to just take the loss like sometimes. <laughs> Hey, it's a financial loss. It sucks, but maybe it means people aren't going to bring it up forever. You know what I mean? Hey, you know these one dollar like, giveaway items trade. that we bought off of, uh, you know, Oriental Trading. No, no, we got to take those back. Oh yeah, they get wildly frugally capitalist. These socialists, real fast. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but you know, at the same point though, I'd also say I'm running the campaign here, man. We got to win. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm, if, if that's the margins I need, that's the margins I need. Now they mentioned in the article. We kind of scrolled through a little bit. They talk a little bit about the fact that a lot of his staff was very inexperienced, very small. He had, like I think, an eight-person campaign for a very long time. Uh, and they also talk about something else I want to look at here, which is basically we've kind of noticed this just following the campaign. A lot of people, if you're following it closely, have kind of noticed this. And I actually have something to show you guys to kind of highlight this even further. But uh, moving forward, Mr. Yang said he wants his message to become more human-based. Uh, perhaps a necessary shift for a candidate seeking a broader audience. His vision of a human-based campaign, he said, involves talking more about the way he thinks the signature pitch can really change lives. So okay. the quote, telling the stories of the people that are receiving the freedom dividend, telling the stories of people who are not getting the freedom dividend, but whose lives would be changed if they did. 
and also telling my story to a higher degree. That's what Andrew Yang said. Now, what does he mean by this? Well, just today, I want to make sure I find the right video for you guys. Just today, Andrew Yang posted a new video on his official Yang 2020 oh, for president. Oh, I was about to say, is this the same one that showed up on his Instagram profile, the contest winner? I believe so. But yes, this one, is great. One thing I thought was really cool about this was, you know, the article comes out him talking about this, but this is what he means by that. This is, like I said, posted on his official channel just a day or it's today. A guaranteed annual income, a guaranteed minimum income for all people and for all families. Shout out Los Angeles, we were there. Yeah. Supporters call themselves the Yang Gang. They chant PowerPoint at his rallies and wear ball caps. Shout out Fred the I saw him there. M-A-T-H on the front for Make America Think Harder. I think we're in that Democratic candidate for president. Andrew Yang. Please welcome Andrew Yang. Please join me in welcoming Andrew Yang to the stage. Now there's a reason why I'm showing you guys the beginning here with the, the, the pre-roll and this stuff. Normally I'd cut to the chase, but I want to highlight this. So, let's keep watching. so imagine being the guy who's getting medals from the White House for creating jobs around the country, realizing that your work is like pouring water into a bathtub that has a giant hole ripped in the bottom. I'm a parent. I've got two young boys who are six and three, and I'm not going to bring them up in a country that's going to fall apart around them. We need to evolve as fast as possible. I'm running for president because That's I'm focused line. on solving the problem that got Donald Trump elected in the first place in 2016. The reason he is our president today is that we automated away four million manufacturing jobs. We started with millions of manufacturing jobs and now we're going to do the same thing to millions of retail jobs, call center jobs, fast food jobs. We're in the midst of the greatest economic, the greatest economic and technological transformation in the history of the world. What experts are calling the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution. The stuff that got Donald Trump into office is just going to accelerate. Capitalism right now, it's become this winner-take-all economy. If we continue just to see ourselves as inputs into the giant capital efficiency machine, we lose. We need to make this economy work for us. Because if the economy doesn't work for us, what's the point? Instead of using GDP and capital efficiency, we should be using things like how our kids are doing, our own mental health and freedom from substance abuse, average income and affordability, clean air and clean water, and then use those as the actual measurements of economic progress. The slogan for my campaign is humanity first. We're all human beings, we all have equal value, all right. and we need to start acting like that. Yeah. Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang wants to change the way we think as a society. Dude, He's put dude, some ideas on the table that, that most politicians have Hold not on. wanted to talk about. He's really been campaigning on a says, platform I'm of right. ideas. The only person talking about all these creative solutions. You actually thought you could get somewhere right with here. this. Well, I was apparently correct. Oh! Oh! So my ask for you all tonight is for you to take this new vision of the economy, this trickle-up economy, this human-centered economy, this vision, and make it yours. Are we going to get demonetized by his last comment? Yang does beat Trump. It's yeah, like a game of rock, paper, scissors. And if Donald Trump's... But anyway, uh, the reason why the reason why I want... Because uh, that was that was like three minutes long. The reason why I showed you guys that in its full entirety right there is because it does kind of show where they are... This is what they're talking about when they're saying they're kind of readjusting the messaging of the campaign. Because... I'm going to show you guys something else really quick. Because again, this video he's is He's not kind a of, candidate. He's a rock star now. But this video is... A lot of us... I want to go back and show you guys... A lot of people might join the Yang Gang or even just follow the campaign relative. Recently, I saw someone on Twitter recently. They said they were interacting with someone and said, who are you going to vote for in the primary? And they said Al Gore. Like, there's a lot of people that still aren't paying attention to this yeah. stuff. <laughs> I want to show you guys, because that last video we saw was very well put together, obviously. It was pretty inspirational. It was really good, and it kind of is indicative of the new movement and messaging of the Yang campaign. This is a very different video Would from Andrew Would you say Yang. the fact that Al Gore is no longer on the ballot might be an inconvenient truth? <laughs> Seven out of ten dad joke. Come on, no, oh, you're editing that out, aren't I'm you? I'm just sandbagging that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. I tell you what, try again next time. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll better. <laughs> anyway, this is a video from roughly a year ago. A couple things I want to reference is Andrew Yang. This is another video posted on his official campaign uh, YouTube channel, just like the last video I showed you guys. This is what Andrew Yang's message sounded like roughly a year ago. In the state of Baltimore, I want you guys to listen to this. No offense, no flame, but oh, this is rough, guys. This, yeah. was rough. this was the Andrew Yang message. The message might have been okay, but listen to the messaging from a year ago in Baltimore again. Has he campaigned in Baltimore since? Jeez. I don't know. I want you all to reflect for a moment on what that would mean for you. Would that make it easier to pay your bills? Would it make you healthier? Look, it says Andrew Yang. Would it make in you the mentally garage. healthier? Well, listen, listen. Would it improve your relationships? Would it make you more able to start a business or do work that it's you like, want to do? Come on. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, it would do all of those things. And we know that it's possible because there's one state that's been doing this for 36 years. It's and what painful. state is that? Alaska. Yeah, and how do they pay for it? And what is the oil of the 20? Okay, and a lot of stuff you guys have heard. And again, this is not like the worst thing, but I just want to highlight this is what Andrew Yang's campaign, because again, we'll go through the article and pull up some funny anecdotes. This started early on in 2018, realistically. Uh, I believe there's one quote from a current staffer who said, Nobody in 2018 was joining the Yang campaign to further their political career. I mean, yeah. th this was really, <laughs> I think he, he literally mentions it as like a hobby or a fun thing to do. I mean, uh, there's a funny anecdote in the article I'll try to show you guys where when they first started the campaign, they, they wanted to talk about UBI, but their messaging was so bizarre. The website was called UBI2020.com, yeah, not crazy. Yang2020. Now, nobody currently, if you go to, if you try to go to UBI2020.com, you can't anymore, which I wish they kept that name and um, just said, uh, I think it's just a dead GoDaddy link. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's parked for free, courtesy GoDaddy. So I guess they, they, they wisened up and realized, hey, maybe if you're running a campaign that's not doing that great, it's not a great idea to spend money on the UBI2020.com yeah. website no one goes to. Yeah. Um, they also mentioned how early on his messaging really was just them kind of adopting his book to political platforms. I mean, he really kind of just started this as a guy. Like, how do you run... I wish they posed the question on this article because it is almost like the question of how do you just run for president? Well... Andrew Yang found out the hard way how you just run for president. However, he's now in position, as they mentioned in here. I'll show you guys this as well. Yeah. This uh, breaks down fundraising um, on quarter to quarter basis. You'll realize you know, I give Andrew your... Yang is now just barely, barely. I think he's numerically, what is it, a couple million dollars, which sounds like a lot, but we're talking politics here. Yeah. Behind Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. I mean, like maybe six million behind Joe Biden, but he raised $10 million in that third quarter. He's. I'm actually just happy generating to see money. the New York Times including him on the graphic. It's just a good start. Well, this you know? one, this one's, this one's a, <laughs> a anything that's actually they do leave him out of the numbers based ones. Yeah, but right. if you're going to talk about <laughs> one through ten and he's six, they can't just say here's here's one through seven, not including number six, right? They have to include him. But he's raising money now. We've we talked about recently the fact that he is spending a million dollars in a week to plaster the state of Iowa with his face on TV ads. That's a good use of the money. Yeah. But again, if he's spending all this money, it doesn't matter if, and again, no no offense to Andrew Yang, but if his messaging was the way it was, as I showed you guys in Baltimore in 2018, of, would that help? Yes. Would it help more? Yes. yes. Would it be good? Yes. yes. Like, oh my God, what are you talking Literally, about? Literally, I used to get extra credit to go to some of these events when like, you know, your sociology professor or your political science professor would say like, oh, you know, there's... A political candidate for whatever showing up if you want to go you know you get 15 points extra credit or whatever and i'd sit there and be like yes <laughs> you know like i it's but, but, know, but that, again, that was yeah. pretty bad it, it was but i don't want to get too lost but i just think it is really fascinating you'll notice how uh he even recently came out it was a quote from him recently reaffirming how important they want the messaging of what ubi could mean to communities and what its impact is that was more or less his attempt at this messaging a year and a half a year ago but you could see, man, what a year's done for the Andrew Yang campaign. There's no longer a dozen or so people in Baltimore. I think he's looking at Baltimore a little bit. You'll notice nowadays he's in Iowa, New Hampshire, the Carolinas, and, and Nevada, like a real political candidate almost, and California. Like, he goes to the early voting states exclusively. And here we go. Here's the funny. I want to show you guys this. Where at first, the campaign was so focused on his basic income. The website was UBI2020.com, not Yang2020. It reminds me of recently, Joe yeah. Biden forgot... He, re he announced a new, like, uh, Spanish language part of his no, campaign. No, it was Vamos con Biden. Yeah, and he, but he didn't buy yeah. the domain. So like, He didn't buy the domain Vamos con Biden. It's like the and inverse so mistake that they made here, where they, they just bought the wrong domain here. Like, I don't know why you'd buy UBI no, 2020. No, I think it was, like, Latinos for Biden or something, but he forgot to buy the domain, so Donald Trump staff bought it and then stuck this, like, anti-Biden Latino ad on yeah. it saying, sorry, he forgot to buy but, the but, domain but, and he forgot about hey, you. This is another kind of thing I want to... Uh, again, talking about the money Andrew Yang has raised, he's got $10 million. He just spent a million dollars running ads in a week. I don't think people... That, we did That's the numbers. Huge. It's a lot for one state for one ad. Uh, Tom Steyer has spent a lot more than a million running ads, but they're generally but in one month period. Yeah, he but only spent three hundred seventy-three thousand on in one state in certain ads. Some it's more, yeah. but yeah, generally speaking, they're they're ad buys of like three weeks, not seven days. But this I thought was hilarious. So they're talking about the Joe Rogan podcast and what different financing. Um, uh, so the the podcast, the Joe Rogan podcast, raised a significant turning point in the campaign. And that day alone, the campaign raised a couple hundred thousand dollars. Carly Riley, the campaign's national finance director, said. However, Miss Riley also notes that she had not assumed the title of financial director until July, when the campaign actually had enough finances to warrant a director. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, a lot of people feel like that the Joe Rogan podcast when this campaign sparked, and clearly hundred thousand dollars that was a big point point in the campaign. Mean, but even at that moment, they didn't. The, the, according to the finance director, there was not enough finances to warrant a director at the point. And so you it was have to really look, a different campaign. Just a year, not even a year ago, eight months ago, man. You you have to also just like look at how the NPR article is headlined and titled. I mean, they and literally. This is New York Times. Or oh, sorry, yeah. The, which is the um, headline that called his candidacy originally a pirate ship? Oh, but this Politico referred to as a pirate. Oh, the yeah, yeah, Politico. So here you have the candidacy. That rolled out in 2018 that had one person show up to a fundraiser in a coffee shop in New Hampshire getting titled a pirate ship. And now that pirate ship got some booty, let me tell you, because he was the number one in percentage increase in uh, uh, fundraising in Q3. Yeah. Number one. There wasn't a finance director April of 2019. And now he's the number (laughs) one fundraiser like that is the epitome of rags to riches well, you, well, right hold on there. you want to talk more about speaking of the fundraising and what this fundraising turns been fringing this was the story remember earlier i said if anybody has more info about some of the stuff i want to hear more if anybody has personal i want to hear more about the story i gotta i found us whatever i could find in the short period we had before okay. we filmed so in the early days in late 2018 there wasn't a whole lot to celebrate mr yang recalled the campaign had maybe 20,000 in the bank and held a new year's party as a fundraiser that ended up being quote unquote fun loser i'm assuming <laughs> i'm assuming they, they lost money hosting it but here's what makes it worse the party was so bad one person showed up demanded a refund according to yang so oh. the only now here, here's the thing here's the thing evidence that this exists is out there on the internet i do have evidence that exists here is the event bright posting andrew yang's new year's eve bash Four hour full open bar, DJ and dancing all night, champagne toast at midnight. So the Parkside Lounge in Manhattan. Sounds very nice. It was wow. a er- eighty-five dollar early bird ticket, hundred twenty-five dollar ticket at the door. Hold wow. on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in Manhattan, hundred twenty five bucks, New Year's open bar, that's not an awful no, that's so, a deal. That's a discount candidacy right but I mean, there. But, but, but you see what I mean? Like, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that'd be driving people this is away. This poor man's Joe Biden right here. But again, <laughs> it, it's hilarious to think that... I, I have a question for you guys. Let, let us know in the comments. If Andrew Yang had a New Year's Eve party this year in Manhattan, it was $125, opened oh, open bar, would you go? Would you be interested in going? Do you think more peop- enough people would attend for them to make money? I don't know. I'd Maybe get the early bird ticket and I'd have to give my bar ticket to you. I, but still, yeah. but you understand a point where, like, if he ran this today, oh my God, the amount of people that would show up. But not even a year ago, man, he's they lost. According to Andrew, they lost money on the event, and not only did they lose money, on the event, it was it was an it was a train wreck. I want to I want to hear more about how it was a train wreck. Right now, it's an alleged train wreck. However, it's alleged by Andrew Yang. So I, I will take oh, his yeah. word for it. But so I just wanted to go through that stuff because again, this is what the fundraising looks like in reality in 2019, going in 2020. Now, he is one of the top six fundraisers, and not only a top six fundraiser. Harris is on her way out. Um, you'll notice a lot of people have been falling. Biden raised less less funds from court. Like you pointed out, he's the biggest riser of the two. Yeah, exactly. Again, I, a lot of people sleep on Bernie. I have to admit, I was sleeping on Bernie technically from second to third quarter. I would say probably in the largest amount of money, like actual raw numbers. It was probably it was Bernie that raw raised more funds, right? He went from, what is that? Is that, I can't see the dots. I think that's... Yeah, sorry, 11.8 to 25.2. So he did. He raised yeah. bonkers more money. So I'll give yep. him his props. But still, Bernie Sanders also ran for president in 2016 and almost won. Bernie Sanders has been a high-profile politician for a very long time. Bernie Sanders has had a very big fan base for about a decade. So the idea, or maybe not a decade, but, you know, coming up on about eight years now. So the idea that he's raised a lot of money is interesting. The idea that Andrew Yang, like we said, a gentleman who lost money on a New Year's Eve party in Manhattan with an open bar, and it was so bad that people asked for one person asked for their money back is now able to drop a million in a week. So, again, this is just we're going through the history of the, the last year of the Yang campaign. And there's something else I wanted to bring up, too, because a lot of people forget, myself included. I was talking a lot about November 2018, but that first thing mentioned spring of 2018. This is one of the earlier, not the earliest, but one of the early articles you're going to find about President Candidate Yang. And we're going to go through a little bit more about just how far the campaign has come. And then I guess we'll also mention maybe how far it hasn't come in some ways. So anyway, yeah. this article is dated Wednesday, the 11th of April, 2018. And it says this 43 year old running for president in 2020 wants to give everyone a thousand dollars a month in cash it's from CNBC. And it's a uh, Catherine Clifford who actually uh, wrote this article. And it's, it, this was how Andrew Yang was framed about a year and a half ago. 
Entrepreneur Ian Jang is a big goal for a relatively unknown business person to reach the White House. He's aiming to get there by selling America on the idea that all citizens ages 18 to 64 should get a check for $1,000 a month. No strings attached. Uh, Hold on, wait, wait. I don't know if I say no strings attached. No, that's true, but I'm... There's no age cap on his UBI plan, I thought. Maybe there was originally, but it's just weird. Huh, Again, okay. it's funny when you go back and read Andrew Yang articles well, from- no strings from, attached from, to the recipient. No, I'm not it's talking not, about the string attached. They, yeah. they, they start 18 to 64. It's just funny. When you go back and read Andrew Yang stuff from like a year and a half ago when he was nobody, you're not going to see this part. It, that's why it's talking about it's weird. You don't see it. Anyway, I don't okay. want to get too long up on it, but it's really funny. Um, They're going through it as who's this random Andrew Yang guy running for president? You know, why $1,000 a month? But it's a pretty long article. I mean, they really go through how are you going to pay for UBI? He talks all about the value added tax. It's actually not an awful article. I was reading through it. However, the reason I wanted to bring it up, and what's really funny about it is, this was a pretty long, detailed piece about this guy running for president in April 2018, so long before he ran. Well, Catherine Clifford also, just a few months ago, unfortunately, had to uh, issue a correction on her, or a change on her headline. There is an article that came out, and I believe the article is headlined. Uh, Free money giveaway. I, I can't show you guys right now because the article has actually been pulled down and the title was changed. I mean, oh, okay. and now it reads Elon Musk's backs presidential candidate Andrew Yang, who advocates giving um, Americans thousand dollars a month. They used to say free cash handout candidate. The only reason why I thought it was funny is this was the exact same reporter who actually wrote a really nice, long, detailed piece about Andrew Yang way back in April of 2018. And then we see her in August of 2019 mischaracterizing yeah. him. So I think. There's two ways of looking at that. One, we were talking earlier. Reporters have a job, and somebody I can legitimately see someone coming to you and saying, like, why did you you called him free cash handout candidate? You just wrote a thing about him a year ago, yeah, and them like, saying, oh, that's the guy we talked about. Yeah. That being yeah. said, it's a long article, man. I don't think it's the case. Still, yeah. <laughs> does this mean that he still gets disrespected as a nobody? Or in hindsight, I don't want to get too into it. This is, again, just me kind of spitballing. But it does seem like we're getting to the point now where people actually, no, I'll take that back because this is 100% a fact. Andrew Yang went to the point from who's this guy, he's kind of kooky, he's kind of weird, to now we see people digging in their heels and saying he's bad for the Democrats, I don't like him, and I'm going to, you know, refer to him as a free cash handout and kind of like slur him and stuff. Either you're, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, we're kind of seeing the opposition. There's no opposition yeah. to nobody, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a, I forgot who said it, but someone said they know him booze losers, you know? Like, like they say, yeah. oh, so there's an athlete, do booze bother you? It's like, no, nah, they don't boo the people who lose and suck all the time. They only boo the winner. So if they're booing me, I'm probably doing something good out there. And yeah. I think that's where Jing's hit the point now, where now he's got people booing him, but it's because he's doing something right. Because you know? I told you, first they ignore you, then they mock you, then they fight yeah. you, and they boo you. That, hold on, that's like an then office they, Michael Scott win. quote, where it's like Cardin Ellis quoting somebody else. No, no, first it, it was Andrew Klein. In I know. 1919. I know. And he didn't say they boo you. He said they 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 want to kill you and then they build okay. monuments to you. They want okay. to kill you and burn you. Then they build monuments to you. Okay. So anyway, okay. let us know what no, you Hold on, hold on. There's what? one more thing I want to talk oh, about. Oh, wow. One more thing okay. I want to talk about. And this is the way Andrew Yang views this campaign. And I just want to reaffirm this because I think he had a... I love the way the New York Times actually kind of frames it. So I want to read this to you guys. Let me check this out. So he says, uh, he insisted... Andrew Yang insists that things are not going well in America. He's deeply concerned that Trump will get reelected, and he genuinely believes he offers Democrats the best chance to take the White House. Is he pleased to be in this position? Yes. Surprised? He bristles at the suggestion. I know there's a wistful, isn't it incredible Andrew Yang is still in the race, Mr. Yang said, to which he offered an expletive-laden response. <laughs> We're in it to win it. We have the resources to fight the whole way. Anyone who underestimates this campaign is going to look dumber and dumber over time. Oh, That's what I see. I had, I had to, that was a great finish. So again, I, I just thought this article was a great chance to take a look back. This was a very small and complete, but just a small look at what the Andrew Yang campaign has been like for the last 18 months a little bit, just as far as highlighting from when they didn't have enough money to warrant actually having a director of the money, because there wasn't any, to they raised $10 million in a quarter. That happened, by the way, in about a six-month window. I think All quarter right. three, what, quarter three starts basically right around the end of July? Yeah. Well, July was when they first got enough funds to warrant having someone manage those funds. So what does that mean? What does it mean for Rock a campaign? On. It's, it's exponential in its growth. Oh, one well, last thing I got to get in there. Just shout outs to a couple things I didn't know. Some of you guys that are more connected in the uh, kind of political scene might have known this, but I don't know. I don't, I don't talk to those people. Anyway, I'm trying to find it, but they cited the uh, campaigns Andrew Yang has actually been poaching staff from. Uh, he poached staff from the Jay Inslee campaign, which I did know about. Uh, one campaign I did not know that he actually. Buttigieg? 
No, no, people oh. have dropped out. Um, okay. Um, but one campaign I did not know. I want to pull it Hopefully up. Hopefully, he's not taking any of Beto O'Rourke's people. It's hilarious. I'm about to say, yeah, Beto. Uh. <laughs> he, he, he took some, yeah, Beto O'Rourke. There we go. Jay Inslee, Tim Ryan, and Beto O'Rourke are all candidates that Andrew Yang has kind of poached a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of his base from. So I, I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to highlight that. Shout out to Beto, Tim Ryan, and Jay Inslee. All right. So anyway, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at PSP Radio One. If you want to leave us a voicemail, ask us your questions, call us at one eight three three psp radio You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook under Problem Solver Politics. We love to hear from you guys. Know what you guys want. Give us all kinds of tips and feedback. This is Problem Solver Politics.